right, well, good morning, everyone. Hey, I like these fancy mics we got up here now, huh? Y'all can hear me a whole lot better. I can hear you. Yes. All right, well, we'll get everybody to uh, grab your hymnals, and we'll turn to page 518. Uh, we'll get you to stand. We'll sing uh, the first, second, fourth verse of Shall We Gather at the River? <laughs> Few months, our uh, 
our national anthem has come under fire. Yep. Yes, it has. Uh, to me, a lot of people want to make it a racial thing. I don't think it's got anything to do with race. I think it's got more to do with the condition of the hearts of men and women in this nation than anything else. When we, when we take things that are, that are so sacred to us as, as our flag and, and the men and the women, both we got men and women in the military who are of all races, all nationalities that have come to this country and we're just a blend of different cultures and different people. And all those people who, who love this country so much that they will just drop everything in their lives to serve it is, is a gift to us from a holy God right. that we have men and women who love him and love the nation and love the people of this nation who love the sorry government of this nation Amen. enough Amen. to lay down their lives for us. Amen. And I think they deserve respect. Amen. I think they deserve our honor. Amen. I think they deserve our praise. Amen. And I think that when that flag is flown and that national anthem is played, it is imperative for us as a free nation, as a Christian nation, because we are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mm -hmm. And folks, the way to get justice for all is not to, to spit on the flag and the anthem of the United States of America. Amen. The way to get justice for all is to love Jesus Christ with all your heart, Amen. with all your soul, and with all your spirit. The way to get justice is to love Him more than you love anything else in the world. Amen. And to live your life for Him that people can see Him and they will want to give you justice. Amen? Amen. And so what we're fixing to do right now, we have the Star Spangled Banner in our books. Page 635. What we're going to do, we're going to practice something. That, that, and you can call this sacrilegious. You can call it anything you want to. The Lord laid this on my heart earlier this week that we were going to do today for Veterans Day. I want you all to stand. I want you to face this flag right here. And I want you, we're going to sing the first verse of our national anthem. And I want you to sing it in, in respect to the men and the women who have fought and died for the men and the women uh, who, who, are, who survived wars, for the men and the women who are overseas right now, who are in the states at our military establishments. We're going to sing this to, to their honor and to their glory because we support them. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want you to put your hand over your heart like it's supposed to be. Right. I want you to look at this flag. And I want if you want to close your eyes, you just go right ahead. You just go right ahead. We're going to sing this national anthem. Would you please sing it with me? Oh, can you see? Today, for those men and those women, 
I praise you today for this nation. Father, will the people agree with what goes on here or not? I think it's the greatest nation on this planet. Amen. And I thank you, Lord, that you have made us that way. You have made us a light. You have made us a beacon. You have made us a place that everyone else wants to come to. And I praise you for that. And I pray for our young people. It's so wonderful, Lord, when you go into the schools and they stand and put their hands over their heart and sing to the national anthem and sing to the flag. But God, we're not here to praise the United States of America. We're here to praise Jesus Christ. Amen. For, Lord, there's another thing that stands before us today. And that's the cross on which He died. And we praise you, Lord, today for Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And Lord, if we want to make America great again, it's going to be because we have knelt at that cross. And we have given Him our hearts and our lives. And then will we become great because Jesus Christ is great. And then we pray this in the blessed and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 All righty. Announcements this morning. Uh, this morning after the morning service, uh, we'll be taking up a love offering for Darren Heffley family. Uh, someone will be back here with an offering plate or whatever, and you just put in as God lays on your heart. Tonight, we're starting something new. Sending that service we we'll begin tonight at 5 o'clock. Five o'clock. So we, you know, you're used to being here at six. We're going to five because of the daylight saving time. Women's Bible study. The next get together is November twentieth at six thirty p.m. Uh, I don't say where, but I'm sure we'll we'll let you know where it's going to be before next week. But everyone is invited to come. November nineteenth will be our church Thanksgiving supper after the morning service. There'll be no night service that night. There'll be no night service that night. Y'all heard the preacher on that, so uh, we just. Gonna get full, and I guess go home and uh, let our bellies rest. I know I have to have that. And I know gonna, we got chicken and dressing. I know we're gonna be here because they worked on that last week. Rebecca's pantry. They're still needing things: canned corn, green beans, any anything like that uh, for Rebecca's pantry. Anything else? Any other announcement? Uh, yeah. I talked to the Elijah House this week, and they are down to eleven girls. Um, so I would like to pick back up next week with a dollar club offering. Okay. Um, just to help. Get them something That's right. Yeah, we're not going to be doing an Elijah Club this morning because of uh, Darren Heffley family, but we'll pick up next week. Any other announcement? Okay, prayer request. Billy. Des Henderson. Des Henderson. She um, is having a tough time with her life right now. My nephew, David Denham, he found out that he has multiple sclerosis. Denham? Yeah, Denham. We need to pray for safe travel for Debbie Davis tomorrow. She's got to go on a trip. back on there. Um, she started her fourth round of chemo. Uh, they went in and did surgery again this past week and they were only able to get a little bit of the tumor. Um, but when they went in there, they've actually, something went happened and they've actually paralyzed one of her eyes. Um, so that baby is going through a lot. Um, and the family I couldn't uh, begin to imagine everything they're going through. Um, but they're actually, they're home in, uh, in Nash. They're actually trying to sell it because they're planning on moving closer to the hospital. Uh, so just that whole family is, they are a God-fearing family and they're, they definitely fill our prayers, but more prayers can never hurt. So. That's right. Jonah? Boyd Jones, family. Boyd Jones? I saw another hand, so yes ma'am. My daughter-in-law called me this morning and said that her daddy was carried to the hospital last night at 1 o'clock. Uh, he had fell and hit his head and apparently he's uh, unconscious and they found that he's got a infectious disease in his blood that's causing them to uh, give him a lot of 
lots of antibiotics. So keep her and her daddy in prayer. Her name is Tandra Mayfield. Tandra? T-A-N-D-R-A. And I don't know her daddy's name. One more, Johnny. Uh, my son-in-law and his daughter, Chris and Amanda Reed, they're pretty sure that they're going to be moving up over to Sherman, Arkansas, I think, Texas, to a church and be, you know, a group of kids and all that to keep their that family in their prayers. I'm Annie Tom, T-O-N-G. We need to put the uh, farmer savage family on the fur list. Uh, Miss Jeanette lost her battle with cancer. Jim, would you lift these people up for prayer, please? Good Lord, we just come before you this morning. Come in our cell and ask you to make us worthy of our church. Lord, these have been touched, spoken of, and Lord, we just ask that your will be done in their lives. Lord, if it be healing, it will be a Lord and whatever. God for Jesus and uh, and uh, the example that he he set for us the way we should live our life and try to strive to be like and uh, what he did at the cross so we'll grab your hymnals and turn to page 140 we'll sing all four verses of down at the cross
229. We'll get y'all to all stand for our offertory song. And so let's just go to the last verse. We'll sing Grace Greater Than Our Sin.
in prayer for Brother Johnny as he comes and brings a message. I mean, it's special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've been about that back door. <laughs> My heart almost quit beating that thing. How much nerves can you get that out? Okay. You know, God proves to me every day, just, just shows me so many things. And, and today, you know, we as God's people, we're not supposed to go through this world gloomy dust. God gives us a sense of humor. And God's got a sense of humor. Because I come this morning, and this morning I studied my Sunday school lesson, and I've been working on this song for, I don't know, a week or two. And I always, you know, say, God, you know, you only sing it, open the door. So this morning, John was standing here, and I approached him like I did one time when I was unemployed, and I was drawing unemployment. When I called about a job, first thing I say, are y'all hiring? If they say, yeah, I said, well, I know somebody looking for a job. I wasn't really wanting to go to work. So I was kind of going to ask John, I said, I asked him this morning, I said, do you have someone that can sing this morning? Yeah, I do. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, God. Boy, that just answered my prayer. So I'm tripping out. So I'm in a good spirit. God's got a sense of humor. He prankster. Mm -hmm. That person backed out. <laughs> and I said, my goodness, where's Violet at? <laughs> Bless your heart. But anyhow, uh, this song, it, it, today's lesson in Sunday school was about, you know, God, He brought the light into the world. He put it in us. And we're to take it out into a dark and dying world. We are the light. And that's what this song is about. One of the writing is so strong. That's what this song is about, about the lighthouse. That we're to take this out into the world. And so the, uh, a lost world out there struggling can see and open their eyes. So y'all need to be in prayer for me. And this is an old song. Unfortunately, they didn't sing it the way I learned it a hundred years ago. But we're going to try to make it through it. Seems out of light, a light that I might see, and a light that shines in darkness now will safely lead me home. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, my ship would say. Ships don't sail this way anymore. There's no use in it standing round. Then my mind goes back to a stormy night when just in time I saw the light, the light from that. that stands upon the hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him. For Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin,
of today's youth qualify to join our military. And yet, the miracle of it is they still are the world's best. If you see a man in uniform today, or man or woman, either one, you need to go and shake their hand because they are the best, they are the finest this nation has to offer. It's just, it, as you, you've heard me say many times, this land is a Christian's promised land. It is our duty to spread God's freedom throughout this world, wherever he calls us to do it. And that's what our young people today are doing. So please, if you see a man or woman in uniform, give them your thanks. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Brother I want to talk to you today. My message today is entitled, The Same. The Same. If you would turn in your Bibles to Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Before I get started, I want to thank uh, Brother John Randy uh, for uh, preaching for you, uh, for the Lord, uh, the last two weeks. And, uh, and I, was, I got to see those uh, on, the, on the church webpage, thanks to Brother Jeremiah and y'all. Y'all need to give Brother Jeremiah a little pat on the back there. Once in a while. That was a blessing to, to be able to witness that. And, and I wouldn't have got to sing it any other way. And I thank God for, for men who are willing to stand in that gap. Amen? That's what it's about. Because see, this, this church is not built on Brother Gary. Amen? This church is built on the blood of Jesus Christ. He is our foundation. And folks, we do everything in our power sometimes <coughs> to not give Him the glory. And I can't understand why we would do that. But we want to say, well, if so-and-so wasn't at the church, you wouldn't have a church. If they didn't do this at the church, there wouldn't be a church. I'm going to tell you what. When Jesus Christ was coming to church, it won't be a church anymore. Amen? Amen. 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 Because the devil comes to church every time the doors are open. Amen? He sure does. But I tell you what, he's a defeated foe. He don't have a chance against our Savior. He don't have a chance against our King. Because we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is to be praised. He is to be honored. He is to be glorified with everything we have within us. Amen? Amen. And if it means having to get out of your comfort zone... And get in a pulpit, so be it. If it means having to swallow your pride and go up to somebody you don't even like and tell them about Jesus, so be it. Amen. If it means that it, you have to go into the hospitals or the nursing homes where people are sneezing and throwing up and doing all that stuff, so be it. Our job is to, is to represent a Savior, is to be the people that Jesus Christ has chosen us to be, has called us to be, and wherever we go, people need to see Jesus Christ in us. Amen? Amen. And if they're not seeing Jesus Christ in us, we're not living for Him. Amen. Amen. 
That's the sermon before the sermon. Always the sermon before the sermon. The same. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. One scripture. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Father, thank you for your word. Speak to our hearts, Father. Lord, if there's anyone here today that's lost, I pray for their salvation today. Father, if there's anyone here today with unrepented sin in their lives, I pray that these altars would be crowded today with people pouring out their hearts, begging and confessing, confessing their sin and begging you for forgiveness. And I know, Father, that your blood is still as strong, is still as potent as it was the day that you shed it. And it covers a multitude of sins and it cleanses us of our unrighteousness, Father. And help us today to learn to love one another. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Bless it to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 When we look at the book of Hebrews, you say, well, Brother Gary, the book of Hebrews is what it is. It's written to Hebrews. Well, let me tell you what it is. It's written to Hebrew Christians. And what the Hebrew Christians were struggling with was whether they wanted to stay a Christian or, revert, or, or backslide back into Judaism. And the reason that they were having so much trouble is because the things that they had been taught all of their lives that was wrong. All of a sudden when Jesus came and filled them with the Holy Spirit and began to clarify the truth of His Word, they began to realize that the things that they had been taught all of their lives may not have been just exactly the way it should have been taught. Amen? And we struggle today in this nation as we talk right now. We have the blacks against the whites and we have this person against that person. We've got our Pentecostals against the Baptists and we've got the Church of Christ against these people. People. And folks, that ought not be. Amen. The Bible tells us in, in, in the book of Ephesians, listen to this scripture right here. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 through 6 says, there is one body. Everybody say one body. One what is body. the body? The body is the church of the living God. Jesus Christ is our head and we are his body. And the Bible says there's not a hundred of them. There's not a thousand of them. The Bible says there is one body. Amen. And there is one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Folks, let me tell you what. We serve a God who is the only God to serve. Amen. Amen. And we are a people, and we are a people called to serve that one God. And we are to serve that one God in unity of hope of faith, of the assurance that Jesus Christ died for all of us and whosoever will may come to the Jesus Christ and know who He is and be saved. Do you Amen. believe that? Yes, sir. Amen. Not in my notes. And these people looked at one another. They looked at what all they'd been taught. And they, they had been told it was alright to eat meat that had been sacrificed to, to idols. Oh, no. God forbid. You can't do that. We've been told all our lives we can't do that. Amen. And then there was something else going on, Brother Jim. There was the issue of those Gentiles going to church now. Huh? Did you hear me? There was the issue of those nasty, filthy, stinking, good for nothing, low down Gentiles are going to church now. Does it sound familiar to you? <laughs> huh? Those people that we were taught all of our lives that we were better than them. Uh -huh. Those people that we were taught all of our lives, you can't even sit down at a table and eat with one of them. Those people that we were taught all of our lives that you cannot even touch one of them and worship our God. But all of a sudden, something happened to them old nasty, filthy, funky Gentiles. Jesus Christ saved their souls. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Folks, that's what we are today. That's where we are today. We are those filthy, funky, nasty Gentiles. And Jesus Christ has washed us in his blood. He has filled us with his Holy Spirit. He has saved us to the uttermost. He has written our name down in the last book of life. And we are a part of the church of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what. I'm so fed up with the dishes.
disunity of the church that I don't know what to do. It's high time that we quit being disununited and become united. Amen. One body, one faith, one God. And we are all in this together. And guess what, folks? We do this for one reason. You know what that reason is? To go to heaven. Amen. How many in this room don't want to go to heaven? I want you to wave your hand high because we need to talk to you. Amen. Anybody that would say that I want to go to hell is a fool. Amen. This ain't my notes either, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Folks, the Bible is here in, in Hebrews. The benediction that he was given to the Hebrew people. He had just appealed to them to endure. The Lord Jesus Christ has appealed to us today. He needs us to endure. How long? Till the end. Amen. Amen. He hadn't called us into a half-hearted relationship with Him. He hadn't called us to be hot one day and cold the next. He hadn't called us to be lukewarm. He hadn't called us to straddle the fence. He hadn't called us to say who can go to church and who can't go to church. He ain't called us for none of that. He has called us to worship Him in spirit and in truth to, in obedience to His Word and to know the gospel of Jesus Christ and receive the power of the Holy Ghost that we might have the power to do the things that He's called us to do. And there's a lot of people trying to serve God without the Holy Ghost in their lives. I'll tell you that right now. Yes, because you know what? Here's a simple thing I tell everybody. If you have not asked Jesus Christ to fill you with His Spirit, He did not do it. Amen? Amen. 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 And I've talked to so many people. Paul encountered the people that, that followed John the Baptist, his disciples. And he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we ain't never even heard of the Holy Ghost. Amen? And they received the Holy Spirit. They received salvation that day. Not when they followed John the Baptist, but when they encountered the Apostle Paul who told them about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Have you asked the Lord to fill you with His Spirit? If you have not, I invite you to do that today. I want you to ask him. And these Judaizers, they, he was he was appealing to them to endure to the end. He was giving them warnings against things that they didn't need to worry about, and things that folks of the church is so focused on everything except what we need to be focused on. The focus of the church is always to seek and to save those people who are lost. Amen. The highest calling of the church is to see people come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And there's no higher calling on this planet, on this earth, or ever will me than that calling right there. And that's who we are. We are truly a special people. A people who are called by His name. Amen. He gives us that authority. And it says, so they began to have, be complacent. And the Bible tells us that we are the church of Laodicea. The, the Bible tells us, or people tell us, the theologians say that we are the church of the end time. The people who, who the Bible describes as are lukewarm, who are apathetic. That, you know what apathetic means? It means they don't care. That's why, let me tell you, I'm going get in, I'm gonna get in the pew with you right now. That's why you come to church and you'll do everything in the world to keep them listening to the preacher. Amen? You'll poke one another. You'll play with one another. You'll get your old phone out and you'll start looking in there. You'll start giggling. You'll do everything in the world to bring the light upon yourself to keep the light off of Jesus Christ. That is a loose, warm, apathetic church that don't give a hoot what a person next to you gets saved or not. Amen. Mm -hmm. Folks, I ain't even looking at these notes anymore because I ain't preaching out of them no more. Jesus Christ. They wanted them to know. They wanted these people to know. Before you revert back into Judaism, before you spit on the Gentile church, before you just can't decide you can't worship because you think you, that somebody's eating meat, because you, you know, let me tell you what. There's a lot of people got up last Monday morning because of Halloween. Folks, you can't, let me tell you. You can't let stuff like that dictate your, your life for Jesus. 
Amen? He's God over those things. Right. I don't believe in one of you has ever worshipped Satan. I might be wrong, but don't think so. <laughs> so don't let the world tell you you are when you're not. Amen? Amen. Amen. We worship Jesus Christ and Him cru crucified. But there was something the writer of Hebrews wanted this people to know. Before you backslide, I want you to hear the statement. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. What was he trying to tell them? What was so important that these Jewish people needed to hear that? Because Jesus Christ wasn't thought of of being the God of yesterday to them. Amen? Let me tell you about who he is. Let me tell you about what that means. The Bible talks about, and listen to John 5 and 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, you get this, listen to this, I am. Amen. And you know what those Jewish people did? That don't mean a whole bunch to us Gentiles, does it? But it meant a whole lot to those Jewish people. Because he was telling them, before God chose Abraham, they called Abraham their father. And Jesus Christ told them, before Abraham was, I am. And when he made that I am statement, Brother Jim, they said, uh-uh. And guess what they did? The Bible says in, the, in verse 8, uh, 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 59 of this uh, uh, same scripture, then they took up stones to stone him. Amen. Amen. Folks, I ain't gonna lie to you. There's been a few times since I got called to preach, I thought I was gonna get stoned. Amen. And I don't mean that in a worldly way. Because sometimes people don't want to hear what you got to say. But he, he told them, he said, before Abraham was, I am. And they took up stones to stone them. He was trying to tell them that I am Jesus Christ, but I am also Yahweh God. I am also God of the Old Testament. I am the one. Amen. He said, I am the one. By saying this, this said, let there be light. He is the one who created heaven. He's the one that created earth and all the things that are in them. Colossians chapter 1 verses 16 and 17 says this, For by him were all things created. And here we're talking about Jesus, by the way. That are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Did you get that? That's what the church learned early. That's what the Spirit had revealed to them. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. You know what will destroy this world like that? When Jesus loses His kingship, we'll get slung off this planet. You know why we still stand here with the gravitation and all that we have on this planet? Because Jesus Christ is still on His throne. Amen. And listen to me, all things consist, including you, because of Him. You have life and you draw breath at this very second because of Him. And for no other reason. All things consist for Him and by Him. And he, everything was created for Him for this purpose. And everything that we have, everything that we see, He is the one who brought the flood to the earth, by the way. He's the one who said, let there be light, and there was. Amen? He's the one who parted the Red Sea, Jesus Christ, because He's there. Amen? Amen. You know, ever wonder whose image Adam was formed in? God the Spirit? Can't see a spirit, can you? So whose image was Adam formed in? Jesus Christ. He is the visible, express image of Yahweh God. Amen? That's Jesus Christ. That's who He is. Amen. That's who He is. It's hard for us to understand that sometimes. But great is the mystery of God in this. I'm going to tell you, if you try to understand Him, you have to understand Him through faith and just believe what He tells you to believe. Amen? Amen. 
And, and he is the one who spoke through the prophets. He is the one who stopped the sun. He is the Lord God Almighty who proclaimed in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. He said, I am the Lord God and I change not. Amen. You say, well, there sure was an awful lot of changes going on between the Old Testament and the New Testament between Yahweh God and Jesus Christ. There was one thing that changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament that wasn't prophesied in the Old Testament. Amen? Amen. I, well, I challenge you to go home and get your Bibles and take this whole week or this whole month and read the book of Isaiah. And I want you to underline every time he makes this statement, Thus saith the Word of God. I want you to just underline that. Hallelujah. Because God was in control of this man's writings. Amen. But the Bible said that about itself that it is the inspired Word of God. How do you think it got inspired? By these people who were prophets and writers that, that heard from God and they would say, that's God. And they would write it down. Do you believe that? I do. You know why I believe Isaiah so much? Because everything he wrote hundreds of years before it ever happened, happened. Amen? I believe Isaiah, don't you? I believe all of them. Amen? And I'm going to tell you what, a lot of the things, since, since about 80% of what Isaiah wrote about has already happened, the other 20% ain't happened yet, it might behoove you to study Isaiah to see what else they can go around here. Amen? Because it's going to happen too. And so he, he said, I am the Lord and I change not. He is the God of yesterday. He is the same yesterday. And the Bible says he is the same today. Jesus Christ is the God of the New Testament. Amen. John chapter 10, verses 30 through 33. Listen to what he says. He said, I and my Father are one. Then the Jews, listen to this. When he said that, the Jews took up stones to stone him because he said that. Amen. They knew exactly what he was saying. We don't have a clue sometimes what he was saying, but they knew what he was saying, and they weren't even saved. Jesus answered them and said, Many good works have I shown you from my Father, for which of these works do you stone me? Listen to what they said. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because thou, being a man, maketh yourself God, you know why he made himself God before them? He is the truth. He cannot lie because he was God. And he was trying to open their eyes to who he was so they would receive him. But they didn't receive him, did they? They rejected him. And the Bible says that the stone that the builders rejected became the chief head of the corner. Amen? He is our chief cornerstone. And because they rejected him is the reason the Gentile church was born. Amen? Amen. And so we are here because of that. And so it says Jesus told them that he was equal to Yahweh. And when Thomas beheld him after the resurrection, what did Thomas say to him? He fell upon his knees and he says, My Lord and my God. And wouldn't it be wonderful if some of you today would just touch Jesus for the first time in your life and say, ah, My Lord and my God and kneel to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? And so we, He was seen after the resurrection and that was proclaimed about Him. He also said, Philip, Philip told Him one time, He said, Jesus, He said, Would you show us the Father? You know what Jesus told him? He said, Philip, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Amen. 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 He is the Yahweh God of the Old Testament. He is Jesus Christ, God of the New Testament. He parted the Red Sea for the Israelites. He calmed the storm in the Sea of Galilee. He healed leopards. He caused the blind to see. He caused the lame to walk. He raised the dead from the grave. He would give his life a ransom for us all. Because he had to. He had to. He had to do that. Let me read you some more, more scripture. Let's turn back just a few pages to Hebrews chapter 9. I don't want to hurry up and move on. Hebrews chapter 9, starting in verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You know why Jesus had to die? 
because he had spoken in the Old Testament. And here's what he said. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Amen? That was rampant. That never has changed. It has not changed today. But we don't have to kill bulls and goats anymore. Do you know why? Do you know why? Hallelujah! Because Jesus Christ shed His own blood. Amen. He is the Lamb of God. Why do you think we call Him the Lamb of God? He was the Lamb of sacrifice. Amen. He died for us. He shed His blood for us. He gave us all that He had to give us. And we still reject Him. God help us. And it says, and for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. Folks, all that tells us is he died for our sins. Amen. He is still dying for our sins. Amen. And you can't be forgiven apart from his blood. It's not going to happen. And then it goes on to say, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was de dedicated without blood. Folks, the New Testament was dedicated with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is the gospel. That's why the Bible says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. What gives the gospel power? The blood of Jesus Christ does. And I want to go down to verse 28, this same chapter, verse uh, Hebrews 9 and 28. Listen to this. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that, took, that look for him shall he appear, appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You know what that tells us? Folks, we're to keep on looking for Him. Have you prayed this morning, come quickly, Lord Jesus? Did you know the Bible <laughs> commands us to do that? Have you prayed today? You know what, Sister uh, Patsy? I'm sick and tired of this old world. I'm sick of it! This world's not my home! I'm just here temporary and so are you! You look at Sugar Land, Texas, or what was the name of that place? Southern Land, Texas. Look at those people that came together last Sunday and a crazy demonic man walked in and murdered 26 people worshiping the Lord. Folks, you think, well, oh, that's so unheard of. The Bible is full of it. Right. Yeah. Read Hebrews chapter 11, the, 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 what we call the scripture, the, the the, the chapter of faith in the Bible. And it'll tell you what befell people. A lot of them. It tells you the great heroes. But folks, let me tell you what. There was a lot of them that are nameless. Are nameless. Are you listening to me? Just like you say, well, who am I? They were nameless. And yet they were written down. They said some of them lived in caves. They were hungry. They were thirsty. They were like to froze to death. They were murdered. They were killed. They were killed for the sake of Jesus. We've seen on our very televisions in the Far East right now where these thugs that call themselves people of, of a God put people out on the side of, a, of, a, of the sea and put them down and made them kneel and cut their heads off. Yeah. You know who those people that they cut their heads off were? They were people who said, I will not deny Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to stand beside them people when we get to glory. Right. This ain't a joke. This ain't funny. It ain't about political correctness. No. It's about the very saving of the soul of a man and a woman and a child. Amen. It's whether they'll go to heaven or whether they'll go to hell. Never get your Christianity wadded up in government. No. Amen. 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 I got to move on. I got I to gotta bring out one more point right here, though. He's not only Yahweh God of the Old Testament. He's the Holy Ghost of the New Testament. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you what. 
this gets me excited right here, y'all. Hallelujah. People, a lot of people are confused about the Trinity of God. There ain't no Trinity of God. There's one God. Amen. Amen. But there's three manifestations of one God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the part that I talked to you about a while ago. That if you don't have Him, you're not saved. If you don't have Him, you can't. You don't know what truth is. If you don't have Him, you can't understand the Word of God. If you don't have Him. You ain't going to leave this earth when Jesus comes back. Because right. right. those that are alive and remaining, you know how they're going to go in a moment, oh, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, because the Holy Spirit is going to quicken our mortal bodies. And we're going to go away with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Let me read you some scripture, though. John chapter 14, verses 16 through 18. This is Jesus speaking. He said, And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. I like where he said that. That he may abide with you forever. You say, see, he said another. That means there's a different one. Amen. Well, let's just keep reading and see what else he says. Even the spirit of truth, so we don't get confused about who he's talking about, whom the world cannot be received because it sent him not. Neither knoweth him. Amen. I like that scripture, don't you? Because Jesus implied that those that would receive him had seen him and know him. Amen. I like this scripture. I'm going to keep reading. Amen. But you, it says, they cannot receive him because neither do they know him, but you know him. Now, why did they know him? Because the Holy Ghost had yet been born out. And look at what he says. He says, because he dwelleth with you. In other words, I'm here. It's me. I'm Jesus. I'm Yahweh. And I'm the Holy Ghost. And I'm with you. Amen? And he, he don't even stop there. Y'all listen to this. He says, and I will not leave you comfortless. Now remember he spoke and he said, I must go away that the comforter may come. Listen to what he said about the comforter. After he says, I will not leave you comfortless. Listen to this last statement. I will come to you. Yeah. When that little kid, you ask them if, if they know Jesus, if they're saved, you know what they'll tell you nine times out of ten? Jesus lives in my heart. Well, <laughs> that is the absolute truth. Amen? Yeah. Jesus lives in their heart. How? Listen to John chapter 14, verse 23, same uh, chapter. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And listen to this. We will come unto him and make our abode or our dwelling place with Him. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your heart, guess who you get? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. You get one. You get it all, folks. That's why the Bible says that power will come upon you after that you have received the Holy Ghost. And you will do what? You will become a witness unto me. Right where you are, in that case, Jerusalem, and to Judea, and to the other parts of the earth. Folks, wherever you go, if you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if Jesus and God the Father lives in you with the Spirit, you can't help but be a witness to Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, a lot of us have trouble. You know, I've heard it so many times. <laughs> I have so much trouble being a witness to God. Amen. Folks, learn how to be a witness to God. Quit being afraid of people. Quit being afraid of what others think about you. Amen? The worst thing we can do is start worrying about what our brother or our sister or our husband or our wife or our granny or our grandpa thinks about what we're saying about Jesus Christ. We are dedicated. We are bought by His blood. He has purchased us. I'm thinking of moving. I, I got to quit. I know. And then he says, I'm the same <coughs> yesterday. I'm the same today. I am the same forever. Folks, he is God. He is our Savior and our King. He is also going to be our righteous judge. He is our righteous judge. He alone, listen to me, will separate the sheep from the goat. He alone will judge the very intentions of our hearts. He will all, we will all bow before Him. 
the books will be opened and we will each and every one of us give an account to him for what we have done, for what we have said, and what we have thought in our minds. Think about that for a minute. Are you ready to stand before him that way? Oh, Lord, help us all. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to tell you what. Then the last thing that's going to happen in this judgment, the books will be opened and we will give an account for our thoughts and our deeds. And listen, <clears throat> listen to me please. No one, not anyone, whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will enter in glory. I'm going to read that scripture to you just so you'll know. I want you to mark this scripture in your Bible so you will know this without a doubt. This is found in Revelation. Chapter 20, beginning in verse 11. I want you to read this. My picture close. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Folks, you ain't going to hide from him. You can't. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written, listen to me, in the books. Are you looking at this book? These are books. You're going to be judged by these books and your obedience to these books. Amen? Uh -huh. According to our works. We say, wait a minute. We're not saved by works. No, you're saved by faith. Mm -hmm. Amen? But faith is dead without works. You're saved by faith, then you work. Amen? And then he says, and the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. And the death and hell Delivered up the dead. Did you know hell's going to be emptied on this day? They're going to get a reprieve for just one little while. And they're going to stand before that white throne. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and death and hell were delivered up to the, uh, up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man. Everybody say every man. Every man. According to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And here's what I'm going to leave you with. And I'm going to close. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of the fire. Amen. Folks, here's the question. On that day, where will you go? On that day, what will he tell you? On that day, what will the record tell? Jesus explained it to us himself very well. He said when he stands in judgment of us, he said I'm going to put the goats on my left and I'm going to put the sheep on my right. Amen. And folks, let me tell you who the sheep are. You know what he said? He said, my sheep know my voice. Amen. My sheep obey my commands. My sheep live for me. I'm their shepherd. They go where I tell them to go. They drink when I tell them to drink. They eat when I tell them to drink. Eat. They lay down when I get them to lay down. I protect them. I will give my life. And I have given my life for the sheep. And those people, their names are written in that book. Folks, it don't make any difference whether you're 10 years old or 110 years old. If your name is not written in that book, you will go to hell. I don't know how any planner to put it to you. But if your name is written in that book, You know, the chapter, I challenge you to read that chapter in Revelation. 
And then when you, you know, we put chapters in the Bible because men decided we need to separate it to give you a voice. There's not really chapters and verses in the manuscripts that they took the Bible from. And so when they get through talking about this white throne judgment, guess what comes next? <laughs> the new Jerusalem and the new earth. And after this judgment, I, there's something that's in there I want you to read. After this judgment, Brother Gary, there's no more tears. After that, after that, we're never going to cry again. Why? Folks in the judgment, we're going to see people we love go to hell. We're going to see people we've lived with all of our lives go to hell. We're going to weep and we're going to lament at that judgment. And there's going to be lots of begging. But it's going to be too late. Now. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. And salvation will get your name written in the Lamb of the Book of Life. Amen. Would you stand? I don't know what you're going through today, but God does. I don't know what you believe today. God does. I don't know what you've been taught all of your life, but God does. And I tell you this, I don't care whose mama taught you. If it don't go by thus saith the word of God, it don't apply to your Christianity. Amen. Would you please bow your head? Would you close your eyes? These altars are open. For those who would love to confess their sin now. Hallelujah. These altars are open for those who have unconfessed sin in their lives. I'm here. If you think that you need to be saved, would you please come? Maybe you're here today. And it's time for you to join the church. <laughs> Would you come on up? Inspire them to do whatever it is.
most sacred time in church. This right here is the invitation of the one who died for us all. Listen to him. Because if you're making noise, you're not hearing him. Listen to Jesus. It's the difference between heaven and hell. What's he telling you to do right now? This invitation is almost over with. We still got one at the altar praying. What has Jesus Christ shown you today about yourself? Please pray. Thank y'all for being here today. As y'all can tell, me and my son are just off the old block. Uh, he, he made a remark. I heard him say, uh, I looked up and it was 20 after 12. Well, guess what? But you know what? Jesus Christ is to be praised. He's to be glorified. He's to be honored. And let me tell you what. You don't give a set stopwatch to Jesus Christ or His Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all come up here. We got a blessing today. We've got Floyd and Mary Fleeman. Fleeman, did I say that right? Folks, they've been hanging around here for a little while. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and tell this just so you'll know how important it is that you are the church. You're not the church because I'm here. You're the church because Jesus Christ is here. Amen? Amen. And what he testified to me a while ago was this. I, when you said you were going to be gone for a couple of weeks, we wanted to see what would happen to this church. <laughs> and you know what they said happened? They got their socks blessed off while they were here. Amen. Listen to this. That's how important it is that we don't just say we're the church, that we be the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It's that important. I want you to look at this bunch out here. <laughs> well, I guess we better get this other stuff out of the way first. Do I have a motion that we receive? Brother Jim makes a motion. Second. second. Sister second. Shirley makes a second. All in favor of receiving this couple into our, our uh, fellowship Amen. here, say hallelujah. hallelujah. All opposed, would you say, oh my? I oh, didn't hear none. Every once in a while, one of the kids out there going, oh my, because they didn't hear what I said. But anyway, they didn't do that today. And we're so glad to have y'all. I want you to look at this group out here. And you can't look at all of them. You just got to look at certain ones of them without working out laughing sometimes. He <laughs> <laughs> pointed Johnny. I, I should have known. Anyway, uh, uh, th this church right here is a loving, caring church. They will love you. You'll let them. And we want you to love us back. And we want you to work in the church. We want you to use your talents. We want you to use your gifts. We want you to be a witness for Jesus Christ for this body of believers. Amen. Amen. And I promise you that any time, day or night, when you need prayer, you can pick up the phone and call any one of us, and you're going to be prayed for right now. Amen. And we expect the same from you. Amen. This is a, a this is a, a, this is a brotherhood. Yeah. You know, that scripture that I just preached out of, the first verse says, Continue in brotherly love. What was folks? Somebody's alarm going off. Anyway, I'm going to leave these two up here. I want y'all to come give them the right hand of fellowship. Brother James Hill is going to have an offering plate. Uh, and we're going to take up an offering for Brother Darren and Sister Rhonda. Brother Darren and Sister Rhonda has uh, Brother Darren has been off work for a while on now since June. And he needs some help. And so if, if you have, it's a free will love offering. If you want to give, you do. If you don't, <laughs> keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I, I don't know any other way to put that. <laughs> but don't gripe about it when people want to give. Amen. Yeah. Let's yeah. just give. And give from the heart. And, and God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Not a grumpy one. A cheerful one. So God bless you all. Our visitors, our young folks back here, God bless y'all for being here today. And our other visitors, God bless you for being here today. Amen. And come back. Amen. Amen. And you'll get, you'll be blessed. Uh, five o'clock tonight. Five o'clock tonight. Don't forget. Yes. Uh, Brother Gary, you just missed it. Most precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you have done for us today, the word you have given us. We thank you for this loving couple that you have brought into our midst. We ask you to show us how, what we need to do to love them. 
We ask that you take us home safely. You bring us back safely, Father. We love you. We just love you. In the name of Jesus, we